All right, so this is my new favorite lens for my X-H2S. And if I'm being completely honest, it's nothing special, but it does help me get the job done. And I've had this lens for a couple months now, and it is fantastic for my workflow. So let's talk about it. But first, let's roll that B-roll. So this lens that I got actually has a little bit of controversy towards it, but there is a reason why I got this lens. Well, multiple reasons actually. And hopefully this video can actually help you guys get into my mindset of getting not just this lens, but any gear, any new gear in general, because I'm pretty sure a lot of us have gone through this situation before. So let's track back a little bit. For about three to four months, I was actually debating on three different lenses. And these three lenses, they were, I found that they were all amazing, but there was something from each of these lenses that turned me off a little bit. And unfortunately, the truth of the matter is there will be a piece of gear that will be better than the one that you got. But none of that matters if you don't know how to use it properly. You don't know how to utilize that specific piece of equipment properly. Sorry, I'm rambling a little bit, but here we go. The three lenses. The three lenses are the Fujifilm XF 18 to 120 millimeter f/4, the Fujifilm XF 16 to 80 millimeter f/4, and the Tamron 17 to 70 millimeter f/2.8. Now, before I get into the pros and cons of these three lenses, I should also mention that I did have a checklist of the right lens for me, and this included image stabilization, a good zoom range, decent minimum close focus distance good autofocus and it has to be decently priced so let's start off with the 18 to 120. this lens is a no-brainer it's so good it's such a great lens it has an amazing range uh, with a 35 millimeter equivalent of 27 to 180 millimeters that is your full like wide to telephoto that is amazing and having it at a constant f4 aperture that is insane and to top it all off, it's parfocal, it's made for video, and it's made specifically for the Fujifilm X-H2S. But why didn't I get it? Well, there are three reasons why I didn't get it. The first is I'm not a big fan of power zooms. I like to, because I'm more of a documentary run and gun style filmmaker that I like it when I can just zoom in, in and out straight away, rather than having to wait for the power zoom to get into why the telly. And yeah, I, I'm just not a big fan of power zooms. And the second reason is there is no OIS on this lens. And I know IBIS has gone really good nowadays that OIS is pretty much non-existent, but I would love to know that my lens will be able to give me a few extra stops of stabilization without having to whip out the gimbal. Also, I don't really trust gimbals that much yet. And the third reason is, it's the most expensive lens of all the three. Now, albeit all of these lenses, they're not too far apart, but still enough to turn me off a little bit. So that's the 18 to 120. What about the 16 to 80? Well, it still has a good range, a 35 millimeter equivalent of 24 to 120 millimeters, and at a constant aperture of f4, same like the 18 to 120. And it is one of the oldest lenses of the bunch. So there are many reviews for it, but the reviews are varied. They go from, I don't like this lens to I love this lens. And mostly it is very neutral and very meh. But that being said, the 16 to 80 has 
OIS and no power zoom, unlike the 18 to 120. And it has a really good minimum focus distance of 35 centimeters throughout the zoom range, which is pretty great in my opinion. So that's an automatic win, right? Well, not really. There are three reasons why I just I got turned off by the 16 to 80. Now, the first reason is the autofocus is not the best. It's pretty slow and it was built more for the Fujifilm X-T4 when the X-T4 was starting to get into video. The Fuji, Fujifilm was starting to get into video with the X-T4, 16 to 80 was there. But it's not the best autofocusing lens. It's a bit of a hit and miss. And if you're going to move quickly, well, it's most likely a miss. The second reason is, well, the f4 constant aperture. I know I said the f4 is pretty great, but if I can get f2.8, why not, right? And the third reason is the price is so close to the 18 to 120 that I felt like, why should I be buying a lens that is the same price as a newer lens, but with issues and not built by Fujifilm's own cinema team? And yet I was still debating between those two lenses. Then comes the third lens, which is the Tamron 17 to 70 millimeters f 2.8. I personally found that this lens is actually the cheaper, lighter version of the 16 to 80, but with f 2.8 constant aperture throughout the zoom range. And you know, this lens is a really good lens. It has so many pros. It's lightweight, it's the cheapest of the three. It has vibration control, which is uh, Tamron's version of OIS and the autofocus is pretty good. But I was still debating because I personally felt that there were issues with this Tamron lens. Again, three reasons why the Tamron lens turned me off. The first reason is it's so lightweight that on the X-H2S, it felt very back heavy. It didn't feel robust and it, didn't f and it felt very cheap. You know, so it felt like it was gonna break on me very quickly. So I didn't want that. The second reason is it's not the best uh, zoom range of the three. It's very in between the two. It has a 35 millimeter equivalent of, I'm sorry, I have to look at this, but it's a 25 to 105 millimeters. 25 to 105 millimeters. To put into context, the 16 to 80 is 24 to 120, and the 18 to 120 is uh, 27 to 180 millimeters. And I know it's only that little bit of range, but it seems like a lot to me. And the third reason is, I know how everyone loves how close they can get at the wide end of, uh, in the, with the Tamron, but it's not that great. Honestly, I'll be honest, it's not that great. You, if you were going to be so close to an object or a something, it shouldn't be an ultra wide at 17 millimeters. It doesn't make sense to me. So the Tamron has a minimum focus distance of 19 centimeters at the wide end and 39 centimeters at the telephoto end. But if you account for one, compared to the 16 to 80 here, one, the 16 to 80 is at 120 millimeters equivalent, and the Tamron is at 105 millimeters equivalent, the four centimeters gap between each other is actually a lot. And so that's why the Tamron 17 to 70 turned me off a lot. So you can see where my frustration was at. There were so many good things about these lenses and there were so many things that really turned me off of getting each of these lenses. But obviously, you wouldn't be watching this video if I hadn't chosen the right lens for me. And this lens actually ticked all, not all, but most of my boxes and my checklist. It's a lens that has image stabilization. It's a lens that has a good zoom range. It has decent minimum close focus distance throughout the zoom range. The autofocus is all right. The price is decent enough, but to top it all off, it's nicely constructed and feels good in the hands. It doesn't feel cheap, and it is a lens that's optically fine, but gets the job done. And so I end up getting the Fujifilm XF 16 to 80 millimeter F4. So the B-roll you saw earlier in this video was actually shot with the 16 to 80 millimeter f4. And most of the B-roll you see in my previous videos were actually shot with this lens as well, because I've had this lens for a couple months now. And I'm, I'm just gonna put it here real quick, just there. So in real life testing, I actually found that this lens is a great lens to have in my arsenal. 
it's a really good lens to have. It has that zoom range and it has that nice close focus distance. So if you're thinking about getting a specific piece of gear, you should go and watch videos, gear reviews, watch them, the biased ones and the unbiased ones, watch them all. But I should also say that it's more important that you go out to a shop and actually try it out for yourself because ultimately you are the one who's going to use that gear and you are the one who's going to use it for your needs. And you are the one that decides which is best for you. And just be aware, there is no such thing as the perfect piece of gear because technology advances, prices get cheaper, and most importantly, which is a very bitter, bitter pill to swallow, is that you will ultimately buy the wrong piece of gear. And that is completely fine because mistakes do happen you learn from that, you adapt because you will grow from it. You grow and you become a better filmmaker, better photographer from that wrong piece of gear. So if you're currently in this headspace of, man, which piece of gear should I get? Well, go out to the store and play with it. But more importantly, have a checklist ready. Make sure it fits your checklist and you know what exactly you need from that piece of gear. Go out to the store, play with it. You know, it's even better if you use it in an uncontrolled environment so you can see what flaws this piece of gear has. Anyway, that's it from me. I hope you guys found this video enlightening and I hope you guys enjoyed it. And yeah, I guess don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video. See ya.